All right, welcome to my video on BlackBerry app development. So I guess I'm going to call this uh, lecture one or lesson one. Um, and I'm just going to take you guys uh, through building a basic Python-based web app for the BlackBerry device or for any device, really. But uh, we'll, we'll run it on the BlackBerry. So um, I'm going to share my screen here, and we'll go through some basic Python. We'll write a couple lines of code, and then... Uh, We'll copy it over to the BlackBerry device and run it there. So uh, first off, um, so it's a Python-based app. So I'm going to call my file app.py. And I'm going to build a basic, uh, I'll just put a comment in here. So comments, we can put the pound symbol, we'll say uh, basic hello world app. So this makes a couple assumptions. So I'm making a couple assumptions. They are that you have installed term 49 and very much os and python 3.11 and uh and then i'll take you through a basic app so if you need help with that though there are videos on my patreon uh attached to the tutorials and uh and then you can actually install it on any uh, blackberry phone and then uh, follow through and run run whatever you build so first off i'm going to say um we're going to go from HTTP dot server import HTTP server base HTTP oops HTTP request handler. All right, hopefully I wrote all that right. So what did I do here? So I'll just put a comment. So I imported HTT, uh, HTTP server to create a basic web server and uh, to define um how to handle requests right so uh this is considered the http serve uh package is, is is considered a native package so you don't have to install anything if you got python 3.11 this will work and so i'll put quite a few comments uh as i go just cuz i i find that it helps people when i'm when they're learning just add a bunch of comments to every line of code Right. So just know these are comments and this is a line of code. So uh, next thing up is we need to define a basic function. So uh, and also just for those seasoned developers out here, my approach to this is going to be all procedural based coding. It's the easiest way to learn. And it's the way to learn with the least amount of abstraction, uh, which makes it easy for people to grasp. So I'm going to say <clears throat> def, which stands for define. Um, or in this case, create a function. So I'm going to say uh, def simple response. Then I'm going to have a parameter in here called handler. And let's just add a comment underneath. So we'll say divine a function to handle responses to requests. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is, oh yeah, I forgot to put my colon. Um, and so you see it, it has a bit of, syntax highlighting this ID. And then I'm going to hit uh, tab and I'm going to start my first if statement. So it's going to say if handler dot path equals that. So what I'm doing here is handler is going to be, uh, it's a parameter for something that I'm going to path pass through and path will be a property here. Okay, and so what I'm going to say here is if handler dot path equals this, which is another way of saying um, uh, check if the requested web path is web root, or in this case, slash. So every time you load a web page, um, or you go to a home page, that's really what we're saying here. So if uh, if the path equals home page is another way to say this, then do this thing. Um, okay, so now I gotta check my tab here. So we're gonna say handler uh, dot send response two hundred. So when they land on the page, I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send the web server response two hundred, which if you've uh, been around web development means you know success, right? Oh, or here I'll just add a comment. Um, send a HTTP 200 OK response code, um, meaning that, hey, it loaded the page. OK, next thing up, we'll do handler.send underscore header equals content type. 
so every web request has mm -hmm. headers and inside the headers, um, a web server returns some information. And so uh, we can see headers actually, if you're interested here, I'll just uh, digress for a moment. So this is my web uh, or this is my, my Mac Pro terminal. And so curl is a, another way that we do um, web requests. So if I do curl uh, HTTPS example, uh, dot com. Um, what I've done here is I've is I've queried all the code on the web server, but I've also uh, used the dash v for verbose to give me all the information back. And as we scroll down here, you're going to see there's a bunch of information in here. Um, but a part of of every web request headers are returned, right? And uh, in my request, you can see that my user agent is curl, and that's some of the information here. And then the server returns all these different property value pairs, right? And so this is what um, what we're defining here, but I digress. So we'll type handler dot uh, end underscore headers. Okay. And then we'll send a response. So we'll say handler uh, w file dot write, and we will say in bold, uh, no byte code, sorry, byte, um, hello world or hello blackberry yeah even more geeky okay so i think that's looking good now um in programming fundamentals and and again this this little lecture series makes the assumption that you have some basic programming fundamentals if you don't let me know because <laughs> i love teaching that it uh, is what i do and i really enjoy um, enjoy teaching it. It's it's uh, programming fundamentals are the future. No matter what you think, it is the future. And people say, "Oh, AI replace coders." Don't worry about that. AI will not be a threat to coders for a long time. Um, and headers. Okay, so we're going to send that response. So what I'm saying here is, if it, it, the the request comes in at the web root, do all these things. Else, if that's not the case. They load a different path, then we'll say 404, and we'll send uh, we'll end the header there, and then we'll say handler dot w file dot write. Uh, we'll send some byte code that says not found. Okay. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. So then, lastly, uh, so Python's a very interesting language. I, I love it, but um, I do write a lot of JavaScript and, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about tabs and, and, you know, these, uh, these values as much. So I, I'm always second guessing myself because I write a lot of JavaScript. Um, okay. So then we'll say simple handler base HTTP request uh, handler. Okay. And then we'll close that here. And uh, so what did I do here? Well, this just defines a request handler class to process HTTP requests. So as I've getting uh, as I've written most of my code and the function here, um, what I'm doing is I'm getting ready to run it, right? So these are the last few commands you'll see me do. So the next one we're going to say def, which stands for define function. So we'll say do underscore get self uh, and that. And then inside of this, we're going to say simple underscore response self. Okay, so this is me executing the function, right? So I'll just put a uh, call our simple response function to handle the request and um, send a response. Okay, and lastly, we've got a We've got to actually serve it. So let's go to here and we'll say HTTP server. And we're going to pass through a couple of parameters here. So we will be serving it on port 8002. So I thought about that for a minute because I'm like, do I have any other processes running on that Q5? And I don't think I do. Um, so that's okay. Handler uh, dot serve forever should be a part of the class. So let me just double check all my code here. 
looks good. So what did I do here? Um, so now that I'm getting to the, you know, to the bottom here, it's a very asynchronous block of code. It executes all this, and then we're going to run run this stuff. So first, I uh, create um, an instance of the HTTP server. Uh, then um, I pass the first argument to the network. So I say the first argument where those quotes are, what that means is binds the server to all available network interfaces. Okay. And then uh, the second argument. So anytime we have uh, parameters like this, they're sometimes referred to as arguments, arguments, parameters. Um, they're kind of the same thing in this case. The second argument specifies the request handler class, simple handler. All right, so it's just a parameter placeholder for that which simple ha handler is what we defined here, which comes from what we've imported at the top. Okay, so that should be good. Sorry, a lot of spelling mistakes as I'm doing this live here. Uh, available network interfaces. Okay, so I think that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna hit, I'm just gonna save this file. Now I'm going to go into OWL files. So OWL files, is a Mac app that um, that uh, allows me to communicate on my Q5. And so in the setup of term uh, 49 video and very much, I kind of explain this a little bit more, but Q5 is great because it just gives me a quick way to, you know, put files on the device and whatnot. So I'm gonna go into here. Uh, I'm gonna just put it in miscellaneous, say, and I'll just do new folder, um, We'll call this a lecture one and then inside lecture one. Oh, it doesn't find that. We'll have to hit refresh. It's a little slow because, you know, it's communicating to the device. So we'll open up lecture one and now I'm going to open up my finder. We'll say new finder window and we'll go into my workbook under dev under Blackberry dev lecture one app.py. So we're gonna drop app.py in there. Okay, now I'm gonna load up uh, my Q5 and I'm gonna screen record, okay. Okay, so we're gonna get the screen recording here. And then I'll put the video of the screen here as soon as I've got it, so allow. Let's start. Great. Okay, so now it's recording on the screen and we'll go from here. We're gonna load up term 49 and very much. And we have to navigate to that file structure. So I know it off by heart because I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work with this thing. So it's accounts, uh, 1000 shared. Okay, and I'll type ls. And then we'll go change directory into MISC. So CD stands for change directory. Um, and then lecture one. So lecture space tab LS. And there we are. So now I'm going to say Python uh, three. Okay. And we'll say app.py. Okay. And it says syntax error. Okay. Shoot. So what did I do wrong here on line eight? Um, on line eight, I forgot a colon. I did have a syntax error. Okay, save that again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this from here and let's recopy it. So uh, I'll guarantee you guys one thing. All my videos are gonna be pretty much live mm -hmm. and spontaneously written. There's no script. <laughs> so. It's good. You guys can see the mistakes I make as I go. And uh, okay, so now we've we've uploaded the new one. So Python three app dot pi. Okay, it looks like it's running. Oh, another spell a spelling mistake. Simpler handler is not defined. Did you mean simple handler? Yes, I did. All right. So where are we here? Um. Okay, 
Okay, there we are. And what line was that? Line 35. So line 35, yeah, so I just had the function uh, class name wrong. Okay, save again. Hopefully this is the last one. So when I'm teaching students coding, I often I often say like, okay, who's really good at spelling? And, you know, some people put up their hands and, uh, and you know, a lot of people won't. And that's because uh, I can say that 95% of the bugs that I'm going to fix for them are going to be spelling related, right? So I say, I always, I always got to practice that spelling and most code, the code programs don't take that into account because, uh, you know, we spell, misspell function names all the time. Okay, try again. Okay, another one. Oh my goodness, I might have to remake this video. Um, but it's good for you guys to see. So where's this one? Did you mean serve forever? Yes, and see, I write server every day. So the method that I'm actually accessing is serve forever. Save, delete, again. Um, all right, <laughs> here we go again. Okay, all right, up arrow, Python 3 app. Okay, it looks like it's running. Now, I, I, I'm i going to, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to our browser, okay? And we're going to type in 127.0.0.1. Okay, that address uh, stands for um, local host. And... Uh, it just means the device itself. So what port did we say? 8002, so 8002, enter. Okay, and there you said, there, there it is. We zoom in a little bit. Hello, BlackBerry world. Okay, so let's just recap. So we, we wrote some Python code. The process is running in term 49. So you can see the log file there, it, it logged the get request. And, and so that program is running locally on the device. So, so it's a web server with one endpoint that returns a simple message. Now, you know, it's not that exciting, but it just, I wanted to give you this introduction to show you like, okay, we can do a lot more. Like with my apps, you know, I'm storing the databases, I'm doing calls, um, but I'm using a very web uh, development or, or uh, API focused uh, approach. And the cool thing is, is that in the, uh, real world, when I'm doing real dev projects and DevOps work, this is how I develop. I typically build an API first that handles the requests. And then I send, you know, different front ends or I generate front ends if I'm using something, um, you know, a component based uh, web design. Um, but, you know, I could use Flask and template, you know, things out. And, uh, and so that's typically how most web software is built. And so I could build, um, a lot of different software using this approach. And, and I'll just show you here in the terminal, if I type SQL Lite 3 and hit enter, see in the BlackBerry device, it has SQL Lite built in, which, you know, for the majority of web apps is more than enough uh, to, to do something pretty, pretty good. But anyways, that's a quick intro. We'll call this lecture one of BlackBerry 10 development in 2024. Thanks guys. Great. Okay, so now it's recording on the screen. And